Welcome back to Let's Talk Business. I'm your host, James Price. It's episode 21. How good is that? Last episode of the year. This one will drop early in the new year. But it's a pretty special episode and we've changed up the scenery uh, just for this one. We're here at Estina uh, Suites in uh, Penrith. Shout out to Estina Group. Uh, thank you for, for having us. Um, and we've got three princes from Western Sydney. Ray, Zepp and Jean. I'll let them tell you more, including pronouncing their full names <laughs> and giving us a bit of an insight into what they're up to. But I'm, it's my pleasure today to, to, to get these, these lads together. They are princes. They're very talented, special people in our community. Great to have you guys on board. Thanks for having me. Hey. Thanks for that warm introduction, man. Yeah. That's a fancy awesome. one. So, Zip. <laughs> yep. Full name. Yep. Heritage. Tell me about your heritage. All right. Um, my full name is Zephaniah um, Tavito. I'm Samoan. And I'm um, yeah, from here, Western Sydney. Uh, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Yeah. In fact, in fact, I, I had the pleasure of meeting your dad before you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Albert Tavito. Yeah. And um, how good is he, eh? Everyone knows him. He's a legend, yeah? Yeah. Um, so fortunate to have him on our panel podcast, uh, yeah. the Drink West uh, Brewery, just oh, a bit over a month ago. Yeah. yeah. And um, and his organisation, Choose Life, yeah. um, and what he does for the, the youth community is just just amazing. Yeah. yeah? So um, it's nice to have you, have you there. Thank you. Jane. Uh, full name, Eugene Akeli Filo. Uh, born and raised in New Zealand, but uh, full Samoan. Samoan originally, yeah? Yep. Yeah? Uh, yeah. Yep. And the land of the long white cloud is where you land were raised, yeah? land of the long yeah? white cloud, that's it, man. Yeah. Outside yeah. all. Yeah. South Auckland. So, so who do you barrack for, Samoa or the All Blacks? Ooh. So Samoa, full league, but All Blacks at heart. <laughs> <Four years. laughs> yeah, I barrack for South Africa. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, nice, nice to have, nice no, to have thanks you. Thanks for having us, man. Appreciate it. Right, pleasure. Ray. Ah, my full name is Raymond Arkeli Savaginaya, and I'm Samoan. We're first cousins. Um, and yeah, I was born in New Zealand, but raised in Western Sydney. Ah, right. Yeah. yeah, nice to meet you, man. Nice to meet you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's a pleasure. And it is, it is a pleasure. And we've, we've, um, we've caught up before, and it's, it's, it's nice to have you on board. Thanks for having us. Hey, I understand um, you reckon that happiness is an inside job. Is that 100%. right? Mm. Yeah, I'm big on playing to your passions. And I think uh, being this line of work for the past two years with the brothers, I think um, we've been pretty fortunate enough to continue growing in that space and, yeah, chasing passion and mm. that follows through with happiness. It's all an inside job. What do you mean, though, by an inside job? You, do you mean that only, only, only you can control it? You can only control the things that you can control. Once you realise that you can only, because of this, this thing that's outside of your control, then you shouldn't put too much stress on those things. So mm. just be a bit more relaxed and easy going and control the variables that are within your power to do so. That's tricky though, eh? Like uh, it requires a lot of kind of self-control, do you think? Yeah, I definitely think a lot of self-awareness and I um, think working with the lads, we talk a lot about things that we're passionate about and we're lucky enough to to inspire each other to keep doing mm. things that we love doing and have a space like a school to work in that allows us to flourish in that space. So, yeah, we've definitely been able to grow and share what we love to do with our kids. And, yeah, yeah. it's been a ride for the last two years working in the school. So tell us about Bennett Street at Colson. So what goes on there? What do you, what do you three do? Tell us, tell us what goes on. At our school at Bennett Road Public, um, we, Pacifica, um, we run a Pacifica program there, um, the CLO, so I work predominantly with um, the Pacifica families and no, not just them, everybody else as well. But yeah, there's, they've just had such a big demographic that hasn't had that much um, mm. catering to yeah. um, since the school's inception. And over the years with the growing number of students attending and families joining, um, I think the school has made a good move in hiring a team to specifically cater to that. And we've just been, yeah, in the last two years, we've had a really fun time getting to know mm. our kids and our families. and exactly what they would have thought they um, our families have drawn to us and we've felt like it's been natural for us to kind of build those relationships is that like if i'm a you know 
a young lad or or or, or lass in you know second year, third year, um, and I've got a Sunderland background. Yeah. And I met Bennett Road. Right? What what do I get as a result of you guys kicking around doing what you do? What do you get? Well, I think uh, growing up in New Zealand for me, I went to school in New Zealand, so um, being able to see how different it is from um, schools over here in Western Sydney, especially where we are at, at Bennett Road, um, it's a blessing to see like people like us three for the Pacifica, the young Pacifica people at our school because they look at us and they don't see teachers, they see um, older brothers or older cousins that they can relate to. They just like draw to us and, and it was just casual with them. It's easy to build a relationship like that mm. with them. So so is it like is it like being in a family and having a great yeah, uncle that's in, the, in the corner? <laughs> so, 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 yeah, that's that's all it is. Just pull them in yeah. age. Yeah. Don't be cheeky, man. No. So, so you, you know, as that young person in that school, would I, mm. would I see you as a friend or a mentor or a, a bit confidant of both, or what, what, what? How mm. would I see you? A bit of that? both. I think there's um there's a fine line between having a friendship with the kids and then having like the just putting them in line with their teachers or if they're mucking up, our teachers will talk to us to talk to them if they are not um like reacting with the teachers as much as they would with us. So, yeah, that's the mm. relationship we have with the kids. Is that because of, you know, simple... Just because we're so cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, is that because of communication? Nah. I think it is too. I'm just seeing, like, if I was to see someone um, like us three, if I was in their place, like, just to see them telling us off, it would be like families telling us off, so it's a bit more culturally, like, getting mm. in trouble from your older brothers or uncles or whatever, yeah. I want to talk about communication. Zep and I. Yep. Hush. <laughs> hush, yeah. Hush, hush, hush. Tell me yeah. about hush. Tell our viewers about hush. Okay, so. I heard about hush. Yeah. Right, I heard about it from, from someone that's got great respect for you and, yeah. and pride for you. Proud. Yeah. It's a very proud father. Yeah, I, I don't think these guys know about hush. <laughs> but um, yeah, so hush was a music video that I um, recorded I think uh, 2018, so a few years ago, yeah. uh, straight out of high school. Um, and it was um, a song to combat and um, talk about uh, <clears throat> mental health, uh, suicide prevention, and um, uh, something that I was very passionate about, about at the time. And I said it still am, yeah. but yeah, it was um, something that was, that was heavy on my heart in 2018. So yeah. Why did you put it to music? Why? I think... Um, uh, so, I think everyone has their outlet, um, whether that's going to gym, um, doing music. I think music was mine, uh, my way of um, kind of talking about my struggles without needing to talk about it. So, I'd, I'd always just go to my studio, record it in my garage, write music, yeah. um, and that's my way of that was my way of talking. I know people always tell me they're like, oh. Yeah, you're not very outspoken or you're not, I don't speak very much. But when I speak my music, I've got a lot to say. So, um, yeah, it's just my way of speaking. So it's a comfort zone for you? Yeah. Yeah. That's, I think that's where I'm most comf comfortable, yeah. Yeah. Say that. And what impact did it have? Um, on you? On me. Firstly. Um, I think, yeah, that was the beginning of me uh, releasing music, so... I wasn't really releasing music and still to this day, not really releasing music. Um, I don't think um, releasing music is my passion. I love making music. Yeah. Um, but I don't think the being a star or being, That's, uh, the reason why I do it is not um, fame or like, so it's, it's more of a outlet for me. To it's, express yourself? Yeah, to express how I'm feeling or, or to even help kids um, that can relate to me, yeah. Um, to my stories, uh, just to let them know that they're not alone, going through the same thing. Yeah, I like. Yeah, that. I like that. Yeah, but you've got to be, you've got to have a bit of courage to do that, right? Yeah. Even though it's a, for you, it's a, a comfortable medium. Yeah, um, I'd rather keep my music to myself, <laughs> to be honest. But no, but um, that's. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. I, I but, mean, yeah. yeah. These guys tell me all the time why you're not releasing music. 
He's too humble. <laughs> yeah, he's too humble. He's too humble, but yeah. it's, it's too good to keep up really good music. Well, yeah, I think he's yeah. got some of the most talented stuff that's yet to come out. But mm. So, what's his problem? Is he selfish? He wants to keep it all. <laughs> <laughs> it's too shy. Yeah. yeah. No, I like, I like, well, you told me something before. He never wanted to release something until it was Perfect. the real him, mm. the way that he yeah. sees himself. And I think that's always evolved over the past two years. But mm. I, I love what he's doing. He's got so much music, but the yeah. stuff that he wants to let out is going to be the stuff that he is going to be wants, himself, yeah. yeah. 100% yeah. me thing. Yeah. So, so, when you put that music together, yeah. does that, is that like a, it's not like a major epic, hectic process. Like, what does it just flow out like? I think oh, that's a hard question. I think it depends because um, it can be both. I mean, it could just flow, or it can just take a really long time thinking about it. Yeah. And then, yeah. So it's. I think it's different all the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, happiness is in inside, inside job. Like, I think as as individuals, but also as business people. Uh, yeah. or, or people mm. in the education field, right? um, no matter what we are, being able to talk to yourself mm. and deal with yourself is so important, right, as a foundation. And, um, and so, you know, I, I, I do think it takes a lot of courage. Yeah. And uh, to release that must have taken yeah. quite a lot of courage. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But um, I think it's pretty special, right? And it's building that skill, whether you're building it for yourself mm. or to share with your community or others. Mm. It's, um, we shouldn't underestimate it, right? Yeah. It sounds so, like it hasn't got, it hasn't <clears throat> got million dollar tags on it or shiny things or, you know, bling or whatever, but, but it's the fundamental basis on which we're an effective person in my view, right? So that's why I want to raise it. I love, I love listening to it, but I guess I tried to, in listening to it, I tried to put myself in in your shoes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was interesting. Yeah. Hey? So on the 24th of January this year, mm. you invited these kids over yeah. to write down some goals. Mm. Is that right? That's right, yeah. And, Jen, you wanted... You want a polyfest? Yep. I think a little polyfest. Yeah. Was what you had. Might tell us what was all that about. So polyfest is, um, like I said, I, I grew up in New Zealand, and every year um, in March, um, high schools get together and they have uh, polyfest, and they have different um, stages. So they have Samoan stage, Tongan stage, Cook Island stage, and they make it a competition between all high schools. So. Um, in that three days or two days of um, Polyfest, there's performances at every single stage. And um, to me, I thought that's what was um, what I was missing, but then also work, working in schools. And um, we did a multicultural day last year. And that to me, that was like a little taste of Polyfest. So, you know, um, us boys band together in the beginning of the year and wrote down some goals, whether it be big or small. And one of my um, ultimate goals was to um, host a polyfest. Me thinking it'll be just like three primary schools just next door to each other. And then um, once we got planning, we realized it was bigger than what we thought. And then elevated culture happened. And yeah, our little polyfest grew into <laughs> 15 schools and... A pretty big yeah. event for Western Sydney, right? Yeah, 100%. It was, yeah? It was an amazing day. Um, and, yeah, this, and it, this couldn't have happened without, you know, um, the boys here. And, you know, we really dreamed about this and we put, like, pen to paper and then made a reality, watched everything um, grow into what it was on the day. But, um, yeah, I wish I could take all the credit, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, well <laughs> it was, you got it was state, man. <laughs> it was just... These guys just were just... Yeah. <laughs> nah, so I, just, I don't think they did much. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it was just a dream for me, but, um, you know, Ray really took... Um, he took charge of all the, all the boring paperwork and stuff, and I just... <laughs> it was just a dream for us. So we all, you know, we all drove this ship and... 
Yeah. How, how did you work as a team on this little little project? Like, if you think about, and I'll give you time to think about it, yeah. right? The one thing that you did as part of the team, hmm. the best the best thing you brought to the team in delivering elevated culture, right? And for our audience, um, and hopefully we can we can show, show some. We'd love to show some footage as part of this mm. podcast because it was like it was some amazing footage, right? <laughs> so when was it? Was it the eighteenth of November or yep. thereabouts? Yeah. But but if you think about the team, right? Because the three of you, the three princes, were, were, <laughs> were you you were the guys that pulled it together, as far as I know. I mean, I'm sure there were other people that helped, mm. but you know. What would you say that his his main strengths? Oh, definitely um, reaching out and actually um, talking to people because my strength is not what his his strength so, is. So he's he's a front he's man. He's a he's a front man. He's is a he? he's the go getter, the guy that gets it done. He's the driver. He's the driver. <laughs> is he? He's a yeah. bus driver, right? He's a bus driver of our Lamborghini. Yeah. <laughs> Is that is that right? Is that is that what you, what you're good at, man? Yeah, I think kind of things that are like I working in the insurance space and moving into schools. Mm. So I yeah. really aspire to be a BDN, and I love to you know, develop the, the people, develop, develop people. relationships. Yeah, yeah, and I think um, once we shared the idea that we wanted to mm. um, hold a multi-school festival with our principal, um, he kind of gave us free reign to. Mm. He said, "Look, it's a it's a grand idea. Um, plan for the best, but expect the least." and when, I love when people give us those odds where yeah. they, they think you, they, oh, I might fail. So just in case, don't get your hopes up. We like to show them up. So I think we, mm. yeah, I think being able to contact all the schools, um, building those relationships, it's a new thing for us since yeah. our school never had a community as an officer before. We didn't know yeah. what the parameters of what the role was. But yeah. being that we had the approval from the higher ups, we started reaching out. We emailed all the schools, we called all the schools, we went to every school to visit. That'd be part of my role because I'm allowed in and out of school to kind of build mm. those relationships. And yeah, I think from there we're able to see what is what each school is actually doing for our, our community. Because being in Mount Jewett, um, and you know, in this area pocket of Penrith, there's high percentage of Pacifica students in, in every is. school. So yeah, I think yeah, we we're really passionate and then given the feedback from our parents and our students mm. with the first year of having a, a program at our school, we thought what are, what's not happening for other schools that other kids are missing out on. So, yeah. Our vision kind of went from what are the kids missing to what's happening in the high schools and how do we kind of eventually filter, you know, that every kid gets the same experience in primary school and we can utilise mm. the primary school space to build that strong connection to school and, and build that strong sense of community for our parents too. So that slowly transitions into the high schools and elevated culture was that vehicle for us. So. Yeah. He is a front man. He yeah, talks, doesn't he? Okay. <laughs> yeah, we, we just say, we yeah, just, we just say yeah. they're not out yet. <laughs> when you're having a goals session, how do you shut him up? Like, you oh, know, we, so just, that... we just let him yap away and we just... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then you say, hey, hey <laughs> we we're going to do, do this. <laughs> so, so, yeah, yeah I, can see, I yeah. can see that, right? Yeah. And I've, I've had the pleasure of sitting down with him and Claudia and mm. um, I enjoyed chat with Claudia, by the way. The real boss. <laughs> <laughs> the real boss. Yeah. She's the real boss. <laughs> Raymond. <laughs> uh, but, 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 but like he's got a real skill about yeah. conversation and listening, being attentive and mm. taking note and taking an interest, which mm. is critical, right? Mm. But what did you add? What did, what did you add as part of the trio? Do you um, think? What's your strength, man? Is it ideas? My own is... Um, performance like growing up in New Zealand and especially um, my upbringing and our family we love to perform so you know we have a, a musical family so everyone yeah. can just pick up an instrument or sing a song really? and it's, I love yeah. <laughs> so for me um, growing up in New Zealand in schools we've learned like so many different Maori songs so many different Samoan songs so being able to um, teach that to the kids here has been a blessing for me so it's just I'm just reliving my childhood through them and mm. being the next messenger right. so that they can teach whoever's next and the next generation. So I'm just being a messenger pretty much. Yeah, nice. I'm just dancing and singing. <laughs> so, what would you bring to this um, table, man? I don't know. I just did. Typical. What did you bring to the table? I think. I'll ask these guys if you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you've, no, you've got a chance. It's just 
being there for them. <laughs> Whenever yeah. I like lose jobs, I don't know. Whatever they need me to do, I think um, ideas as well. Where we can get stuff mm. from? How do we get stuff? Yeah. Who to talk to? Um, I think a few of the contacts that we got for what we want to do. <coughs> Sorry, came through. Uh, just the context I had, not even me, just my dad, to be honest. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just people my dad knew, so I just said, right, oh yeah, this person or this person, mm. talk to this guy. Mm. Yeah, I think that's what that's what I brought to the team. But well, figuring out a path, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To make it happen. Yeah. 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 I mean, I don't know, how proud are you guys of what you did, right? Oh, I'm not no. proud at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm not happy, actually. Oh, right, so you had 17 schools, right? There was 15 in total, and, and two had to unfortunately pull out as some teachers weren't available, but yeah. Yeah, 13 okay. on the day, 13 schools. Primary day. schools in Western Sydney. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And high schools, yeah. And high schools, all at the one place. Yeah. And, and what was the purpose of it, right? Like, was it to showcase Pacific Island culture? Yeah? And Indigenous and culture. And Indigenous yeah. culture? Yeah. Yeah. yeah? Yeah, I think for us, seeing the value of culture in schools, um, I, we're really proud of our school being a pioneer in, in, in mm. um, the Mount Druid area, allowing us to, to hold these cultural lessons. And um, within our roles, they've allowed us to, to take the students out to um, teach them about their culture. And I think we've seen the value that it adds to the kids and the families. And I think we want to share that with all the other schools. Just to hit on the head and say, hey, there's this festival happening. This is what yeah. it's doing for our kids. These are the parents' responses for knowing that they, you know, they're excited for events yeah. like this. And, so yeah, I think we've started something where a lot of schools are now saying, hey, we'd love to get a, be a part of this, mm. how can we join? And that's kind of what we wanted other schools to to acknowledge that, you know, at least see that how we've been able to build our community at Burnham Road and, and continue that in other schools because we, we want to change, on, you know, a lot of how our community sees schools and you know, the yeah. way that we utilise school. We want it to be a good resource. What, why why has that been a thing, right? Like why, have, why has it taken three princes to come up with this plan, right? Why, why, why hasn't that been just an obvious thing that should have been happening for yeah. years? I think it, ha- it has happened in the past. Yeah. So 15 years ago, there was another festival called We Are One, We Are Pacifica. Um, that's kind of where we kind of um, would f- uh, get our get gist of what's, how's it been run before. Yeah. But previously, it was a, a big organisation would have bucket of funding to support Pacific communities. Mm. Um, so that's where they, they poured it into schools and said, we'll put these festivals on and, and one company looked after the payment of everything. Yeah. Um, it ran for four years, I believe it was, about four years. Um, we got up to about maybe eight schools in total coming up to those um, festivals yeah. after four years. And, and then once the funding dried up, those events stopped. Yeah. So I think being that we wanted to do something sustainable and um, seeing how we've been able to build up our parent committee at our school yeah. and seeing that they're interested in the same thing. So if, if we can get our parents involved and they're interested in this, I'm pretty sure every other school will have the same body of parents that would mm. want to get something like this together. So we try to make it a school-led initiative where we as CLOs or SLSOs, um, different positions within school push this event and yeah. then we get uh, business sponsors um, and reached out to a few other organisations to be a part of it and share in, you know, enriching our, our community with culture. And yeah, that's how we've kind of been able to pull off the event that was the Elevator Culture. Mm. And yeah. thinking about, you know, we talked about your roles in the school, right? Um, which, you know, doesn't do it justice, but I almost see your role as, you know, creating a platform of, of support, mm. for want of a better word, for, for young people and they're in that learning environment. You know, and then thinking about elevated culture and the festival and celebrating, you know, the culture um, in the way that was so, you know, so visible. Um, mm. I mean, I. I got emotional. I got emotional just watching some of the footage, right? And I, I, I'm not from that culture. Yeah. But how does that? Do you think, reflecting back on, on your clients, the young, the young boys and girls, how does that improve, their their situation in their school environment? Is it, is it simply a matter of, a bit like hush, being able to verbalise it, being able to mm-hmm. see it, being able to bring it out is that mm. do you think or am i looking too deeply at it like i think it gives the kids um something to belong to yeah. i think we we asked one of the kids and they said um it's it's giving them a space and a community um to belong to um and that's i think we've just the community's been there 
we just showing the kids that it's there. Yeah. Yeah. And they're all together when they when they sing. Yeah. Um, when they perform, they can they can see the kids around them. Mm. And they and I think they're able to see it now. Mm. That oh, there's these kids from this school all the same. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. it. Yeah, so it's a belonging, right? Yeah. Mm. And maybe there was a bit of an emptiness not having yeah. that before. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think in, in the school space, being um, Polynesian in this area, sometimes your first, second generation, third generation, the, and sometimes our culture is lost with it. Mm. The language or it's um, just some of the customs. So I think once we've been able to bring it to our, our students in particular, we've seen that with our own eyes that these kids love to perform. They, they flourish in that space. They show off and they love yeah. to sing these songs nice, loud and proud. And I think when they go home singing those songs, the next yeah. day the parents come and say, I'm so glad our kids are singing those songs. I heard them yeah. sing it in their room. And, and those are things that I used to sing as a kid. I wonder, I asked if we taught them and they learned it from school. So I think for us is using the schooling space to kind of get these kids connected to their culture. And mm. now they, they come to school saying, oh, do we have our culture class? Or do we have Pacific class today? Yeah. Yeah. And then the parents start to feel like they can be useful at school. They can, mm. you know, they can connect with the school because we've got people like us pushing initiatives for, for our community. It's interesting, you know, giving people something to belong to. I didn't realise how deep culture goes until I, um, I reflected on what you guys did for Elevate Culture Festival. And, and then I spoke to a young Polynesian guy in his, his 30s the other day and he said, uh, said James, he said, you know, I've got, I've got, oh, I don't know, I've got this Polynesian background, but I've grown up in Australia to um, Australian parents and very thankful for what they've done. Uh, but it's only in the last couple of years that I've looked into my Polynesian background mm. and I've revisited where I came from. And he said, as a result, I now feel connected. Mm. He said, I felt I couldn't put a pin on it, but, you know, specifically but he said for many years i just felt like wasn't complete right mm. and so you know i don't know that was one person's experience but but it, uh, it was uh it hit me right because you know i'm in business right and my clients are in business and we talk about culture all the time you know and and, you know, I look at the difference between successful businesses and just businesses. And the ones that are really successful have a deep-seated... Um, uh, and it's very intangible. You can't put an exact fix on it, but a deep-seated culture that is, is positive and has elements that drive mm. what they do. Mm. Um, and uh, it's the difference between, you know, good and absolutely magnificent, blow it out of the park. Um, and it's, but it's culture. Mm. It's mm. not AI, it's not machines, it's not, you know, it's yeah. not, you know, pretty things, it's not numbers of people, it's culture. Mm. Um, so if you think about it, this might be a generalised question, but Polynesian culture, what are the elements of it? If you had to describe it, huh? if I got, you know, if I was in uh, Westfields at Penrith um, and there wasn't a fire and I could go up, <laughs> I, could, I could go up the escalators with you, Ray, yeah. right? And um, so I had 15, 30 seconds. Tell me, how would you describe it? Can you describe it to me? Hmm. I'd say three... I think for me that stick out the qualities of Pacific culture would be honor, respect, and service. Mm. Honor, respect, and service. Do you agree, guys? Yeah, hundred percent. And food. And food. Put <laughs> 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 the food Just in. Cut first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's have a look at that one. <laughs> and now we cut to the honor, kitchen. respect, service, and food. Food. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Tell me, tell me that. Why those? Why those? Those four. Why? Um, honor. When growing up, we you know we always hear, always honor your parents. Like mm. whatever we do, like don't give credit to yourselves. It's always of your upbringing. Like you honor your parents before everything else. And for service, um, you can't be a leader unless you're you've served 
like your parents, your community, your church, whatever you go, whatever you do. Yeah. Um, you yeah. always are uh, like giving. It's always mm. about giving. Yeah. And one other um, thing I think we should mention is God. Like first Thank before mm. anything else, we always honor God. We always, you know, give. We don't um, praise ourselves. We always give um, glory and honor back to God. So whatever we do, right or wrong, is like all thanks to God. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that's. I think that's a key factor of why we've been able to do what we've done because, you know, we've um, not only have we prayed for it, but our parents have prayed for mm. um, what we've been doing in schools and what we've been able to do with our community as well. And um, you know, we had, had a conversation with Ray. Um, a few weeks ago, um, building up to elevated culture, and we said, you know what, like um, our grandma's prayers have kept us safe throughout all these years. You know, growing up, we've been blessed to um, grow up with our grandma, who's um, passed away recently. But you know, she every single day um, before the sun will come up, she'll pray for every single person in our family, and you know, I think that's um, one of our key drives that has kept us going and she's always been telling us always be proud of your culture always honor your parents honor those who've come before and after you guys so i think that's a legacy that um we'd like to keep going and pass on to the next generation so so and, that's, and yeah. i guess elevated culture is part of yeah. a way of transferring mm. that yeah. knowledge mm. and understanding Stephanie, do you agree with that? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I think. Um, yeah, I'd say the same. Um, mm. As as a Pacific Islanders, um, we know that our, our parents and our grandparents are um, mm. always praying for us. So um, they they always want to see us. When even with um, like my own dad, so he's um, we've been lucky to have him um, yeah. mentoring us and and the older boys too, like um, Lawrence who've been in the schooling space for like over 20 years and um, they've just passed their knowledge down to us and that's that's why we've been able to mm -hmm. take it and then um, do as much as we as we could with it is because it, the the generation keeps getting better and they're always mm -hmm. passing knowledge down and I think that's part of um, Pacific culture as well as um, passing the knowledge down um, and yeah getting better mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, I reflect on the Polynesians that I know, yeah. and um, including you three lads. Cheeky facts. Cheeky facts. <laughs> um, but there is, we mentioned it before, humbleness, mm. but also patience. Don't let this fellow. <laughs> Maybe not. Uh, but but I I don't want to stereotype it, but you know I got a great mate, um, and his his name's Zep as well, and his his parts are mine. And shout out to Zep. And you know he's humble and he's patient. Mm. And in today's world. Of transactions and fast moving stuff, there's not a lot of that, right? Like, you know, I think in life, but also in business, we can get wrapped up and think, well, if I don't do it now, it's not going to happen. You know what I mean? And yet, you know, with the experience of a few years, I'm starting to realize that things usually come to those that do the right thing. And wait their turn. Mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, I can't help reflecting on some of the qualities that you've talked about in terms of your Polynesian culture because I think, you know, in business, and you know, excuse me for going back to my wheelhouse, <laughs> right? but but you know, people owning business, and senior managers in teams, mm -hmm. and even in schools, you know, the hierarchy in the school teaching staff and other staff, it's, it's not easy to develop a culture where you're looking out for each other mm. and you're passing down mm. those ideas and themes and, and 
ingredients for success. You know, it's uh, there's a lot of lot of structures in organisations and businesses where you know knowledge is power, but you yeah, hold on to it, mm. fine, and you move on and you try and climb as high as you can. Yeah, where where I don't think that's mm. that's not the culture you guys are telling no. me about. Hey? Yeah, this is, Am I right or no? Yeah, there's something that uh, um, uh, one of the older boys back in New Zealand, he's a uh, someone to it as well, and something that I've kept from him was, um, you know, you can be someone, you can wear the tattoos in there, but the tattoos and patterns they don't belong to us; they belong to Samoa. So, what we what he's saying is basically whatever we learn is not ours to keep, but we pass it down to the next generation for our culture to keep on growing yeah. and keep on going for generations to come. So, that's something that stuck with me. You know, you can learn so many things and keep it to yourself, but there's no use of just keeping it to yourself. And the, the only power you have is to just spread it out to everyone else, mm. whether they're um, Polynesian or not. So, oh, I love that yeah. because, you know, and again, sorry, you're going to have to put up my <laughs> business talk, right? But we value businesses, right? Yeah. So we put dollar signs on businesses and we say, look, you've got this business over here, elevated culture, nice looking business. We reckon it's worth a couple of bill, right? No, just joking. But, <laughs> but you, could, you couldn't put a value on elevated culture mm. because it's worth more than any any value. Yeah. We know that, mm. right? But in valuing a business, you look at what's called the sustainable earnings. So they're not just the earnings for a year or whatever, but they're the sustainable earnings. The earnings that occur beyond this day moving forward and how strong are they mm. and how long do they last you know and in five years time in 10 years time in 20 years time are they still dripping through are there mm. still elements of that business that are creating that earning stream now that's a very mm. commercial view of it but yeah. you just described a culture which is about passing on values yeah. forever and not Anyone yeah. owning or controlling those necessarily. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, so you know, I appreciate being able to reflect the analogy <laughs> as a result of what you yeah, said. Five hundred dollars will. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put it in the bank account. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <in> Twenty. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. So, so wildest dreams, elevated culture. Did you think it would? Go have, when did you like so the 24th of January 23 yep. was when it started right yeah so and it was it was delivered on the 18th of November mm -hmm. you know just a month ago um, over that period of working together as a little team and delivering something that was you know beyond what people expected mm -hmm. I suspect mm -hmm. um, when did when did you have confidence that it was going to actually go off and be a hit? I think for us, um, something that we've always carried between us well, since working together is that is that sense of community and confidence in each other. Right? We yeah. told each other, yeah. as long as you got my back and I got your back, all we need to do is believe in each other mm. and we'll get anything this year, anything's on, anything's on the table. So I think everyone asked, do you think it was going to be this successful? I did. I know yeah. we did. Yeah. I think we, we knew that our community, we knew what they, what they needed. We've done our research on, on what's been done in the past and I think we were just picking up where they left off with mm. previous festivals. It just hasn't been done yet. We were just new guys on the scene with yeah. with more knowledge now and more connections with mm. you know Albert. He's the fourth person of this. He really made it happen yeah. for us and um, building a community of other um, school leaders of other CLOs. They they are a big part of why this actually happened. Is, yeah. is getting that buy-in from other people who see the same thing. So yeah. I think for us it was sharing our vision. All three of us collectively built that together, and I think being that it was that powerful enough to draw people in. Um, to collectively actually say, hey, I'll go back to my school, I'll get my kids ready, we'll be there. Yeah. I think that's where we were like, it's going to happen. It's going to be as big as it, as it would be. And I think we just, just kept getting more excited each day. Yeah. We, yeah. we were, were buzzing because we, we weren't ex anticipating any sponsorships or anything like that. Yeah. We said, we'll do this at a bare minimum uh, cost. We'll try to run this. We'll make a few connections. We'll make some friends and, and we'll just have a, a space, a stage, and that's it. Um, it was yeah. only towards the last two months we had a sponsor reach out to us yeah. at Western Sydney Airport. And, I think that's when we really kind of buzzed. Yeah. We're like, oh, yeah. we actually might be able to get something back for all the kids. And, 
and put something back on the cards for you know, yeah, back nice. to our community. So hmm. I think that just, yeah, we've had the confidence from the staff. But as we go yeah. closer to the date, it was like everyone's trying to get a piece of this and everyone's trying to support yeah. us too. So we really wanted to, yeah, deliver the best thing that we could have at the time. And I think this is probably the best case scenario that we could have for our first event. Yeah. Sipanai, did you have any doubts? Um, I think we we didn't know how it was going to look, mm. but I don't think we had any doubts. Of, I think we knew we could do it. We just didn't know what it looked like on the day. So, so is that because you managed your expectations? In other words, you didn't necessarily set, or did you have high expectations? I think we uh, expectations were pretty high. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I think the things what we were going for, and there were some things that we didn't get. Mm. So, um, like artists and stuff, but at the same time. We weren't disappointed that we didn't get those things. Because what, sorry, because what we were able to achieve on that day was um, yeah. amazing. Anyway, yeah. yeah. And what, what if you if you kick around on the day? What were the things that you know? Were there anything? Was there anything that made you tear up? Oh, <laughs> <he's> still. <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh, a we bunch was, of yeah. I don't ask us that the whole day. Yeah. I think even the the day before was a big yeah. one for us. Yeah. We went out. We yeah. went out the day before just to set up the stage and mark out where all the stores would be. And I think we stood on that stage and we're like, yeah. can you even imagine what's going to happen tomorrow? Like the, the field will be full, there'll be happy kids and families. Yeah. And I think for us, that was a big moment. We're like, this is actually happening. It's happening. Yeah. Now. What was what was it like seeing the parents of those children there? What oh. was that like? So real, eh? I think. Yeah. Can't explain it. Either. Well, like, yeah. it's... Well, because they they would have not necessarily had the opportunity of an event like yeah. that. Yeah. Mm. I think the way we, we see our kids, um, sometimes they can be little rascals and they give us a run for our money every time we do our lessons, <laughs> is pipe the side yeah. down, the next side jumps up and we get we can get frustrated with trying to prepare them in the yeah. time. But we know they value our, our, our lessons. But by the time we get to a performance, performance these kids yeah. show up, man, like, then sometimes like, you know they're here yeah, and there, but when, when any time comes to perform, that's how we know that's yeah. that's what we do it for. And the pride that we feel in our group of kids, mm. we can only imagine how each how of those guys' parents yeah. would be like, you know, a hundred times mm. that for for their kids to, to be part of something like, you yeah. know, learning their culture and being proud of it. Yeah, mm. I mean, I think performance is an interesting mm. concept, right? I mean, you've mentioned that it. it runs deep in your family in terms of music. Yeah. And 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 you outed yourself with with uh, with uh, hush. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> Keep the hush. According to these according to these guys, you you're a real performance artist. Um, he's all right. He's, a, he's just all <laughs> he's right. He's average. No, 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 no. You know, I think like like it's not easy for a young person sometimes to perform mm. in front mm. of a crowd, right? Yeah. And perform even with their the, their classmates, you know, mm. some people will have all sorts of, I don't know, confidence issues around. Yeah. Them. So to be able to, you know, sort of nurture those to the point where people are happy to perform. Mm. But I guess it's part it's part of the Samoan and and, yeah. and and Polynesian culture, right? But but I don't know, uh, you know, I just um, you know, everyone's got inhibitions about. What, what it's like performing in front of a crowd. Yeah. 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 I think for, I don't know, um, back when I was younger performing with everyone else, it, it is um, hard to know that you're going to jump on stage in front of all these random people. But, you know, you look to your left and right and there's the exact same kid going through the same thing and you just vibe off each other. The pride that you feel, you... Um, you put that out towards what you're performing. Every word you sing and what you say, every dance move you do, it's like it comes out as a beautiful performance. So I can only imagine what the kids are going through when they're performing. I know they, that's mm. the best ever we've seen them perform. Like they, yeah, really. uh, every practice they, <laughs> every practice. <laughs> but on the day that they, they surprise us. So yeah. 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 You can see us. Three on stage, we're just holding each other, holding back the tears. So, yeah, that's. Oh uh, look! Yeah. Look, it, you know. Well done, well done. I mean, I, I raised the issue about setting the goals mm. earlier, um, and 
you know, I think I think there's some great learnings from what you've achieved this year, guys, because um, every organisation and every business, whether they do it formally or informally, they think about goals mm. and they think about objectives and wouldn't it be nice to do X or I've got this great business idea and want to do Y, or, mm. you know. Um, but it's another thing to actually set that goal and then deliver it, right? And, you know, let me tell you, not everyone delivers it. Mm. Um, and it might be a bit different from mm. what the goal was, yeah. right? But, but there is, there's, there's a sort of an eloquent, eloquent and special way of setting a goal and delivering it against the yeah. goal and learning and going the next road, right? And um, and you guys did it this year, right? <laughs> so you know you 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 know and I'm sure you've learned some stuff for next yeah, year. Yeah, hundred percent. And you've learned probably some stuff about yourselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I think between between us three, we've created this culture and confidence between the three of us, where mm -hmm. every year we've been able to plan every terms events and we've delivered every time. So even um, in our first year together. The main, the main goal for us was to build that connection with our students, yep. um, create that yeah. sense of community and support for our school and staff as well and the families. We've done a really good job at that. So then come year two, I think we, we want to set up really high goals in itself. For us, we had in term one, we set up a parent meeting group, mm -hmm. the schools for a specific uh, parent meeting group where we catered to our, our communities and we delivered that. We planned it ourselves, we put out the letters. Um, we got food. for the food, <laughs> put heaps of food, heaps of food. <laughs> heaps of <laughs> but the response from those things and, you know, constantly building building those reps, I think for us it's building reps in our, in, yeah. and our ability to pull these things off. And over time it's kind of developed into as long as we believe in each other and as long as we've got a clear vision and we've got our goals, we know what to do. I yeah. think a lot of the late nights before the festival is, yeah. can we do this, can you do this? We started delegating between the three of us and when one side we'll just say, oh, can you take this for me? We've, we've always been able to support each other and, Continually build that goal, yeah. build that confidence in us to achieve those mm. goals, and yeah, now it's just now we, I feel like we there's not not that much that we can't achieve if yeah. you know we put our mind to it. And I think that's kind of yeah. what we want the kids to see as well is that if you really have a strong team behind you, even if you have confidence in yourself, giving them that sense of belonging at school, and then being able to showcase that, I think that's a good starting stepping stone for these kids to build their confidence up. And whether it's just standing up in front of a stage, there's so many ways that that can you know go well mm. for yourself as you develop those those qualities in yourself. I can feel the confidence. I thought it was my personality. <laughs> I think it's the confidence. No, no, I can't. And like, it's confidence, but not arrogance. Mm. And it's um, it's not arrogance at all. It's humbleness. Um, but, but confidence is so important, but in gendering that sort of, you've got my back, I've got yours, that culture will win a business, it'll win in the community, it'll win as an individual. And um, you've just shown that. What about food? You mentioned food. <laughs> I don't know, I'm pretty hungry right now, but is food important in the culture? I think it's a, um, a c good conversation starter. Mm. With, yeah. It's been, we've been able to bring some of our families in that we never see, mm. just through running um, cooking classes. Yeah. So that's, I think it's, yeah, good. Yeah. Good to bring bring people in, yeah. And, um, yeah. People from our culture, so. yeah. yeah. They know is that because they like sharing food? Yeah, mm. yeah. yeah. We do like sharing yeah. food. It's in our culture, so a full night is every Sunday. The family, the family mm. lunch together after church, yeah. after meetings and whatnot. So I think as well, using schools. Um, yeah. One of our first things to kind of get our parents engaged was us visiting with some food. Mm. Sometimes yeah, our yeah. parents are apprehensive at school, or they don't have the connection with the school, so come to school isn't the first thing that they're going to come and do. Yeah. So. I think what we've been able to deliver at our school is we'll just take some food over and say, hey, just check it in, how are you guys? And build those relationships from there, mm -hmm. knowing that's what our community are like in our cultural setting. We've applied that to school and they've allowed us to go out, mm -hmm. whether it's buy hampers and things like that, just buy something small, just to kind of yeah, break, yeah. break down those walls. And it definitely does open doors. Yeah, no, that's interesting. Um, what particular food do you like if you're looking at your Samoan menu? <laughs> Sapa sui, kalu, say chop sui, taro. <laughs> Don't forget the coconut cream. <laughs> yeah. uh, KFC is a winner. 
There's one just over here. It's close, it's close to the gym where, Are, I, where, I, where you I train. Buying us a giant feast after this. <laughs> um, Velvet Crescent. Ooh. Velvet Crescent. Yeah. I understand it's in Auckland, is that right? Yes, yep. sir. Hey? Yep. It's now she grew up in. Yeah. 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 But yeah. it's also it's also an apparel business, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Hey. Yep. <laughs> How, how's that? How's that business going? It's good. Yeah. I think that's the way we've. Yeah. Before we started school, that's kind of the vehicle that got us in. I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So being young police, I think one of the things that we we took an interest in was clothing. So we started making little clothing. Yeah. Well, the brother as well um, started as a. There's about five of us that kind of all included all brothers. We grew up in the same house. Mm. Um, and yeah, we wanted to use clothes as something to tell our stories. So some of our slogans was um, fear is temporary, regret is forever. And yeah, I think we where we kind of saw fashion as something that we wanted to just wear, we could use that as a message as well and tell our story. So mm. the name was the name of the street that we grew up in. Our grandma's think, house. Our grandma's house. Yeah. 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 For us, it's about <laughs> humble beginnings. And, and that's yeah. a story that we take with us everywhere that we're just kids who... That was a housing house back yeah. in New Zealand, you know, we, that's how we grew up and we were yeah. 10 siblings all in one house of all their yeah. kids. We never saw it as a housing house. We were just like, that's grandma's house, we went to grandma's house. Yeah, that's lovely. Yeah, and next door was our auntie's house, so pretty much we used to think we owned the street because <laughs> two of our families were <laughs> <laughs> Right next door to each other, yeah. so yeah, nice. backyard, running around the street. Yeah. yeah. Even yeah, though I grew up here time, in Australia, yeah. those are the times where every time I'd go over back for school holidays and every holiday mm. from the 11 all the way up until I was about 20, yeah. 21, I'd come over every probably three, four times a year, yeah. stay for a month, stay two months. And that's kind of where I you know, grew my relationships mm. with my cousins abroad. And yeah, that's kind of what we saw. We, me and my other brother, we thought coming to schools would be a great place to, to share our brand. You know, Our kids will see us wearing these clothes and in 10 years time, we'll still be doing it. They'll grow yeah. into, oh, I remember Mr. Ray, Mr. James, you know, doing their thing. And, that's how we thought we'd get into schools and we never saw that it was going to grow into this big thing of us creating our own culture, which is the elevated culture, yeah. and try to push that as a schooling program to support yeah. both communities, Indigenous Pacifica. So, yeah, that's that's kind of why we came into schools was to kind of show up our clothing brand to start and then to kind of you know, use our own skill sets and, yeah. and you know, our, my background with, um, with insurance space and apply that to yeah. the schooling space as well. And in Jean's performing arts, come to school, I think we kind of collaborated and, yeah, this is... All the birthing story of yeah. Velvet Crescent for us. So, yeah. Nice. What about what about business and innovation and like in school? You know, I'm, as a student in school, right? You know, I guess you get to a stage and you think about well, what am I going to do? Mm. What am I going to do with myself, right? And it seems to me that sort of you know, there's a lot of push to go to university. Yeah. Um, and if I don't go to university then I go to TAFE, get a trade. Um, so there's sort of two avenues, yeah? But I'm wondering what you see about, and they're not mutually exclusive, but I'm wondering what you see about a third avenue, and that is pursuing a passion that might be mm. a clothing brand, mm. might be a music career, um, might be a performance career or whatever, right? Um, do you feel that our school environment brings that out enough? Those, or, or provides that opportunity? In the, you know what I'm, you know what I'm getting at. I mean, just, mm. or you know, I mean, I'm not saying you can't go to uni and then yeah. Yeah. decide to start a business yeah. or do both, um, but you know, I'm, I'm sure. Like yourselves, yeah. there's a bunch of <laughs> bunch of business people or people that want to work for businesses that are yeah. sitting in those you know those yeah. classrooms thinking, oh gee, what am I going to do? You know, mm. I'd really like to try that. Mm. Is there an environment to pull that out to lift that up? Do you think, or do we need to do more? Yeah, I think schools are. I'm not going to say I don't know how too much to think about it, but I think for us, I think being in the schooling space, we've been able to use our passions and and mm. share that with our executive team and say. These are things that we love to do and how we think we can add value to you yeah. know, to giving other spaces to the kids and yeah. being in, in our space. Yeah, we do encourage a lot of them, find out what you're passionate about and, and yeah. pursue that because it's in this day and age, you know, it's not 
universities and the only thing for students there's there's so many opportunities for them to make you know good coin as well doing other things so Mm -hmm. i think using our our connections to other community services we're trying to bring bring people to we brought like a real estate agent to come and speak to the kids and we brought a new south wales health worker so there's other Mm -hmm. opportunities as well that we highlight for the kids but yeah i think we probably could do more in the schooling space to highlight those things but for us in a primary school setting i don't think that's a main focus. No, you know? no, I get yeah. it. I get it. I'm probably talking about high school, high yeah. more. Yeah. You know? I'm sure there's different aspects in high school, but mm. yeah, we're, we're, we're in the primary yeah. school. I just see a bunch of business people, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry. You know, on one track, right? <laughs> but, 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 you know, there's great minds thinking away about, mm. you know, about the next song they're going to compose or about yeah. the next performance or about the next clothing brand and, you know, that they're going to distribute. And, mm. uh, or they probably... They may not know, even at a young age, um, you know, exactly what they're going to bring to market, but they know they're passionate about something, Mm. about design or, Mm. you know, about, you know, trading or whatever it is. Um, And I think, you know, it's important that our schooling environments right from the get-go provide those platforms to to bring that up, Mm. you know, to support it because... Sometimes passionate people are also can lack confidence, mm. you know? I mean, the confidence thing is a bit of a drug, but it takes a bit to get onto it, you know? And I say that in a positive way, because once you get onto it, you know what the feeling's like. That mm. There's nothing, I feel, I feel like there's nothing better than getting to a stage where you know you're good at something, mm. right? But sometimes it takes a while to get to that stage, yeah. you know? A lot of us self, you know, self doubt ourselves, you know, because we're not sure whether we're really good at that. We've got yeah. no benchmark. Yeah. And sometimes self doubt's not a bad thing, right? Because you can mm. can use it to kind of drive performance. Mm. Um, anyway, it's the ramblings of an old man. But, <laughs> you know, I just share it with you for what it's worth. I don't know. Do you agree or no? I agree. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, me when I first picked up the guitar I was in primary school I was year five in primary school so even just picking it up and giving it a go I found that was a passion early on that I picked up and I only wanted to do music for the rest of my life and I think still that is <laughs> and still doing it now but yeah I, I know um, in school I, I knew I wasn't good at you know maths or English Still, <laughs> no, but I found other ways that I could make myself useful, and that was learning how to um, play music and picking up the guitar. Um, not long after that, I picked up the piano, started playing the drums here and there. You're a dangerous so, man. <laughs> is there any particular instrument you like most? Uh, guitar and piano is my two um, instruments that I will be my go to. Yeah. And does this guy have a voice? Do you have a voice? Yeah, voice <laughs> of an angel. <laughs> he's he he's a voice hush. Of an angel, does he? He's got a hush voice. A hush voice. So, so you could back him. What would we do with this guy? Triangle. Uh, <laughs> he's the dancer. <laughs> he's, the, he's the dancer. He's our backing out. <laughs> the backup dancer. Nah, this guy can sing. Yeah. Can he? Yeah. He can sing. He's. You gonna hear one up now? <laughs> did, did, you, did you bring an instrument? Or? Oh, no. Nah, <laughs> <Nah. laughs> That's another one. That's, That's another, another one. Hey, gentlemen. I really appreciate you joining me on the Let's Talk Business podcast. Mm. Um, uh, it's very self-indulgent, right? But there's not too many other pleasurable things I have that are this pleasurable. That, you know, I can just kick around with, with some very talented, you know, Western Sydney pollies mm. that are that are that are moving places, going places. And 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 the community I know is proud of what you guys are doing and what you achieved. Uh, and elevated culture is just one of those things. But I think we all need to watch this space because it's <laughs> just one of those things. And so, Ray Jane, Seb and I, thank you for joining me on the couch. Mm. Thanks, guys. Thank you. It's been a pleasure, yeah. my friend. Thank you very much. Thank you.
<laughs> that was episode 21 of Let's Talk Business. We're three lads from Western Sydney that are moving mountains. They're Samoan Heritage, Ray, Jean, Zephaniah. It was a pleasure to hear how they built from scratch the Elevator Culture Festival for this year. And it was a pleasure to hear about their backgrounds, what they're doing at Bennett Road Colton Prim Primary School and providing support for young Polynesian kids and helping them grow and learn and be a part of a community. I hope you enjoy it.